All right, good morning. Welcome back to Graphics Addict. Well, it's morning here. It may not be morning there, but that's the way life is when you're trapped inside of a recorded video. I'm Herb, and today we're going to be expounding upon the intro to processor video. If you want to check that out, I'll make sure to link it in the description where the code is that we're starting with uh, on the wiki. And what we're going to do today is add some functionality to the Spaceman demo yesterday uh, that makes it uh, have audio. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down here to where it's uh, line 67. It says input left. And what I want to do is just do a basic audio thing. So at the very top of the file, I'm going to include audio.h. And I'm going to go down here to the place where we click. And I'm going to play an audio file. So if I go into the uh, Appaloon folder, the data folder, there's a sounds folder. And in there, there's a legacy. Uh, or There's actually four different folders. One is UI, Spoken, Legacy, and FX. Under FX, there's a pop.wave. And I want to play that whenever the uh, Spaceman is created. So I'm going to type audio.q and play. Wait, audio, sorry dot manager dot q and play if not playing and then i'm going to pass it a file name and that file name is data slash sound slash um fx slash what was it yes fx uh slash pop dot wave and i'm going to give it a, a random pitch so the way i'm going to do a random pitch is i'm going to do uniform which is a random number between zero and one times 0 0.1 plus 1.0 which will give a pitch uh, slight differences every time it's played and the gain is 1.0 uh, and I don't actually have to set the next two but I don't want it to be looped and I do want it to create the source and generally I always want it to create the source there's only a few special cases where I don't so what this will do is, use using OpenAL, it will uh, cache the file, if the file is not already cached, and it will then play it. And uh, it can play waves and AUG files. If we're going to stream audio, like play some music, which I'll demonstrate in a minute, uh, we would want to use a different method. So you're not going to be using this to play long-form files. Anything longer than a few seconds, say 10 seconds, uh, 20, 30 seconds, nothing longer than a minute will play properly. So uh, this is just for short bursts of sound. Now, um, there is a streaming setup that allows you to do that. And there's also a DJ which does crossfading. So uh, the DJ is probably the thing you want to use, but you can also do it manually. You can play up to two streams at a time and fade one out while you fade one in. So let's go ahead and build and test this. Um, not sure why that is. Let's see if we can use a different way to detect a click. Um, well, we can do left released. Okay, left released. That means you click let go. All right. All right, here we go. And there's our little guy, and there's our stars. Now you notice if I click really quickly, you can only, you don't hear multiple ones. And that's because I chose Q and play if not playing as the method to, to play this file. Uh, let's change that briefly. So right here, we're just going to make it cue and play. Now you can use limited. You need to use these in cases where just things sound crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and build this. Here we go. Is 
that fun? I don't know. It's kind of annoying. All right. So that's how you can play a sound. And you don't have left-right panning control um, unless you use some wizardry. Um, <clears throat> so you have to use uh, non-standard sources. Mm. Pardon me. Um, so there's, there's many more features of audio, but it's all under audio.manager. Um, you know, basically it's just the cue and plays or cue, cue and play, cue and play if not. So Q will will cue it up but not play it. Uh, it'll return a pointer to that. Now you can set Doppler, gain, listener, uh, um, all sorts of stuff. But there are actually some other audio um, features. So if we go into the framework and we look under audio, we see there's DJ and there's audio.h and there's audio sample lookup. Let's go ahead and open up DJ. So this is a, a DJ track and a DJ stream. And you don't have to worry about most of this, but if you dig down, there is class DJ. And there's a singleton, DJ DJ. All right, again, in the tracks file, we name the track at the same time we're setting the file name, okay? Uh, the next thing we want to take a look at is we're going to go into load.cpp and we're going to activate the DJ test and we're going to play around with that. So let's go to the end of load, uh, turn off my first window, and we're going to load up the DJ test by including it here. And we're going to do windows dot add new DJ test. So I'm going to build and then I'm going to put this over here so we can kind of see what DJ test looks like. So it looks like it. All right. So the problem is that this window will always be on top of the IDE. So sometimes it blocks you from the menu and that's an issue. So I actually have used multiple monitors for years and that's part of the development environment. Just wanted to mention that. All right, let's go ahead and um, do a, uh, let's see. We'll play this in the background. So this is your little conceptual, conceptually you can do these things, you know, it has nothing to do with the sampling, the sampling happens separate to this. So that's the AI DJ in a nutshell, um, one of the more advanced features of the audio platform. And I will commit that improvement and also this new tracks file um, so that you can reproduce this yourself. Hey, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you have learned something and will deploy and use the DJ uh, as you see fit. If you need to know, I guess you don't have to call DJ.between anywhere. So that must be automatically called. And uh, you'll just want to take a look at this test to figure out how to use the DJ most effectively. Thanks a lot. And please sponsor us on GitHub.
subscribe and hit the bell icon. I appreciate it. Have a great day.